Hey guys, so really quick, I'm gonna introduce this video. So I wrote a 35 page in-depth analysis on pure OCD and somatic OCD. And it is very intricate and it goes very, it dives way underneath the iceberg. So um, I just want to let you know that it's done, it's ready to go. This video is going to highlight it and overview what I wrote. Um, I'm going to read over most of it. So it's gonna be a pretty long video. Um, so if you don't want to hear me speak the actual text, because I find that when the author reads their writing and is able to enunciate and emphasize on certain things, it just is helpful when it comes to comprehending what is being, what you're reading. And so if you don't wanna hear me speak about it or read to you, then you don't have to watch these videos and just click the link below for the Google Drive link. It's free for whoever has the link. So I hope that it helps you out on your journey and gives you some new, fresh, powerful, in-depth insight into all of this because there's so much to learn. Something about it led me to read it and I feel like listening is important as well as reading. So yeah, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. Hello, my friends! Happy summertime! I'm at the beach, and it is here. I'll show you the beach really quick. This place is absolutely... It's majestic and very eclectic and special place that is dear to my heart. It's very special. I've been here since I was little. Crazy to think that this beach is frozen solid and inhospitable. Like, you can't even come down here in the winter. You can swim in the water by the end of July. So, it's pretty amazing. This is a video that's going to be pretty long. I'm going to be talking a lot because I just got done writing up a long guide. It's like an article I made, a step-by-step -step guide curtailing mostly everything that I've talked about in all my different videos and whatnot. And so that is something that I thought was going to, you know, was going to be very helpful for everybody to have in their, you know, in their phone in their pocket, whatever, so you can reference and reread things that will help you in the times that you forget. So it's not so needed, you know, it's not so necessary to keep going back to the videos, asking the same questions or asking, you know, other people or whatever, which is totally fine, obviously, but I just think having a guide where everything is written and we can comprehend these things together is just very, it's very useful. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read to you word by word what I have written because I think it helps when you hear these things actually spoken out to you um, instead of reading it yourself because sometimes depending on the state we're in, it's hard to read. It's hard to stay focused and to really comprehend what you're reading. And so what I'm gonna do is just go through these steps and all the paragraphs I've written on here for you guys. And I will also publish this on Google Drive. I'll make a shareable link so everyone who has the link can download it, print it, whatever you want. So, and I'm not completely done with it yet. So there's gonna be some revisions, there's gonna be some things added, and it's just so long that I'm not going to read everything I've written in one video. And once I finish it up, I think I'm gonna make a part two to this video and finish it up there. So basically it is the master guide to peer and somatic OCD um, questions manual. So basic, at first I emphasized Piro mostly, um, intrusive thoughts and, you know, ego dystonic tendencies and just harmful thoughts or whatever, things that we don't like. So things that we don't want to think about. I kind of had that going at first at the, as the main, whoops, I almost lost the camera, don't you dare. However, it is very applicable to somatic OCD and hyperbody awareness, sensory motor, whatever. So it's still applicable to that in almost every type of OCD. And so let's get reading. I set this out at first to highlight the questions that I get most often and with people that just you know, most of us where we start out, we don't even know what we're experiencing. So I started out by saying, first, what you are not experiencing. 
So here we go. I'm gonna try to speak slowly and clearly. It is very easy, understandable, and common to think in the first days or even months of experiencing symptoms of this disorder that we are going through, that what we are going through is much worse than the true reality of it. It is easy to experience what if catastrophic thoughts of developing schizophrenia, psychosis, losing control, or some other severe mental illness. None of that is true and is actually a part of the OCD itself. Moreover, we are also not experiencing true thoughts from the heart and soul kind. These unwanted thoughts are from a category called intrusive egotistonic thoughts. Lastly, we are not experiencing an irreversible, never-ending, unsolvable, incurable condition of the mind. We are not going crazy. We are not evil. We are not out to get anybody or anything. We are not corrupted. So that's what we're not experiencing. What you are actually experiencing, what is going on? That is the number one question, right? So, well, most likely what you're experiencing is either purely obsessional OCD, puro, or somatic OCD, hyperbody awareness or sensomotor, or a mixture of the two. Sometimes we can have both. And also, um, it is possible to experience other manifestations of like, symptoms of, of OCD, like existential and derealization. This condition is when we misinterpret an intrusive thought or an odd, unusual, or startling moment of awareness that leaves us wandering, that leaves us wondering, shocked, confused, scared, and or irrational. We don't know what we, t we don't know what to do with the thought or awareness other than to either analyze it more or force it away. Neither of those two options work for our good or or are anything near solution to the event. But we don't know this at the time. Thus, we are left with doubt and overwhelming confusion. I'm just gonna be chilling and doing this. All right, so intrusive thoughts happen to everyone and are normally, most of the time, disregarded by the one who experiences them. We typically know they are bogus and off the hinge from who and what we are about. We are also experience, we also can experience random intrusive awarenesses that tend to focus on a body sensation or function, but within someone who is predisposed to this subset of OCD, these simple and harmless thoughts slash awarenesses can appear threatening and real, causing us to apply fear to the unknown to them, which leads to poor discernment of our true normal thoughts versus our egotistonic and intrusive thoughts and awarenesses. So listen carefully, and there's a lot going on in this, there's a lot to hear. Voters, egotistonic refers to thoughts, impulses, and behaviors that are felt to be repugnant, distressing, unacceptable, or inconsistent with one's self-concept, aka, it's a great thing we don't like them, but how can we leave it at that and move on, right? How can we? So how does it typically begin? How does this all typically begin? Okay, so now that you know what first occurred, why are these thoughts, awarenesses, and fears, and sensations still plaguing me? What happened now? How do these small moments turn into, in turn into a full-blown disorder? The problem lies with our original lack of knowledge and understanding surrounding this whole phenomena. Moreover, another major player is the onset of this is inward and outward denial unwillingness to accept we are experiencing a mental illness, belief in bogus, small-minded, and irrational stigmas, and deeply rooted but newly brought up doubt on who we really are, or if this is really what we are experiencing on varying levels. Typically, we are people who have anxiety in a more generalized way, bothering us from time to time in our lives, but never to this degree. That is an important factor in why we unwittingly apply so much fear and resentment towards these thoughts, because we don't realize they are naturally and formally opposite of our ego. We own our own desires and will, and wishes that can manifest from time to time for varying neutral and or anecdotal reasons. Nothing more. We don't know that they, at first, we don't know that at first, so we then naturally attach our otherwise lesser anxiety to this newfound, seemingly foreign and corrupt thought or awareness, which then shape into legitimate fears of the very thought 
or awareness itself either coming true or never going away or back to normal. We fail to see that worry is complete irrationality, even if we agree that it is, because we doubt it deeply since currently things seem so real and persistent. Once that occurs, which is which it can very quickly from the moment this all goes down, the cycle of obsessing about the thoughts and awarenesses begins. Still due to our lack of understanding and enlightenment around this, we try our very best to distract ourselves and or force out the thoughts and subjects into our mind to get ourselves off the subject of the original intrusive thought and awareness. This at first can seem like it works, but truly, we are called, these are called cognitive rituals that only feed the cycle of the disorder even more. Pissed. So, how, how it snowballs into what you are currently experiencing. So now, as time passes, we notice more and more every day that our thoughts and or awarenesses have not gone back to normal. We can begin to feel panic or desperation for answers and quick solutions, which few find, if anything. None, probably. So, we are left with even more fear, even more irrationality. Things just keep going up, which can snowball into us performing extreme mental rituals and may, that may seem relieving, but actually fool us into engaging and empowering these thoughts or awarenesses more, since by doing these rituals, we are unknowingly telling our subconscious mind that we really have something to fear here. So keep this at the front of my mind. But that is not at all what we are trying to do. Common sense becomes murky and hard to find again because common sense in this situation is not always helpful. We need uncommon sense. Thus, we notice the condition worsening, which can lead to more symptoms, new obsessions, new worries, and new themes of the OCD or awarenesses. Sometimes, people can accidentally catch another person's described obsession after simply reading about it or having another Stemming from the OCD in of itself, what if I get this moment, thought moment? That is why I heavily encourage you to avoid Googling or research on the vast internet because that typically doesn't help in the first place and like I already described, can result in the opposite of what you're looking for. Why is that? Well, it's because even when we know what we are going through, and finding other people who have this, we tend to think we're going to find a magic solution before we have done the true, deep, rewiring, transformative, healing, sometimes painstaking therapy and cognitive work that takes a while to find and walk through, but must be done first. We must first comprehend this fully, accept what we are going through, accept the challenge that waits before us, and most importantly, accept and embrace our ability to overcome this entirely with full resiliency, understanding, and compassion. We are stronger than we know. We must choose that we will feel vulnerable by letting our guards down, while at the same time realizing that we are always and will be in full control. We must choose, accept, bravery. We must choose acceptance, bravery, love, persistency, and ultimately freedom. The systems of our body involve, so this gets pretty good. Um, there's a lot of diagrams in here, so I'm not gonna like show you the diagrams, but um, I encourage you to read this article yourself again, and I encourage you to check out all of the things I put in here once it's finalized. Now, this portion will help you to understand why the thoughts are persistent and why they just won't go away. What is the fueling factor behind egotistonic and intrusive thoughts and OCD in general? Like what is really going on? What parts of ourself are at play? Well, I will tell you. Okay, first of all, it's important to educate ourselves on how our physical, emotional, and mental systems are built. We are hugely affected by our nervous systems, but what are those? And then I got the diagrams on here. So, this OCD, and I believe OCD in general, activates the fight or flight response system within our beings makeup this system is within us for survival reasons only meant to be activated when a real immediate danger is in front of us or around us like a burglar in our house for example but in us due to somehow within our genetics dna biological make biological makeup etc 
The exact cause of it is unknown, but that doesn't matter. We are predisposed to have a trigger-happy sympathetic nervous system. The system that is responsible for the fight-or-flight response. That activates in response to events that are not worthy of such a response. Such, a, such as our thoughts and awarenesses that we don't like. What happens is when we experience the at first scary thought or unusual awareness, it triggers a small response of our fight or flight survival instinct, which causes us to notice it more vividly than most and take it more seriously, even when we know it's just a thought. And as we move on, not understanding what to do, and the thoughts become more and more stuck, the fight or flight response survival system Stemming from our sympathetic nervous system shells out a larger and larger response that causes the obsession to ensue leading to more symptoms All right, sorry I'm moving this around so much. I just don't want the camera to be in the Sun So on the other hand with somatic OCD slash hyperbody awareness and our sudden and or unwanted awarenesses of the somatic nervous system, voluntary movements such as blinking, arms, legs, and toe position, swallowing, etc. And the atomic nervous system, involuntary responses such as breathing and heartbeats, can become intertwined and thus interfered with by the sympathetic fight or flight response nervous system. That is due to the activation of the F4F, I'm just going to call it that from now on mostly, so that is due to our activation from the fight or flight survival instinct being mistriggered by our knowledge of consciously being aware of these two natural, ordinary, and or good systems at work within us. New Harbinger publications called this ability to be aware of our high level existential functions as a window of mindfulness. That has actually always been there, and we have experienced it before, but we never before attached fear and irrationality into the mix. Thus, by doing so, the window becomes nearly stuck open. That results in us wondering and fearing why we cannot become unaware again of these body functions, not realizing that we are the ones actually subconsciously ill instructing our survival instinct to keep it that way. Because if we let it go, we'll die, right? Or at least that's what the F or F survival response thinks. It doesn't know anything else except to keep what it's focused on what it's focused on until it is allowed by us to shut down and ease. This is when we find ourselves struggling with somatic OCD, fearing our normal everyday body sensations that we used to do without thinking much of at all. And like as if it will never go back to normal, thus locking us in the cycle of an always on sympathetic fight or flight nervous system activation not all right fun. guys so I cut it out there for now because I realized if I was gonna post all of what I read and everything that I had recorded it's gonna be like a two hour long video and another video after that so I think for now I'm just gonna leave it at that because I want to hear your guys feedback um, whether or not you think that it's a good idea or you enjoy hearing me read that and so just let me know what you think of that um, if you want me to post the rest of the content, I will. But for now, it's all there in the article written. The link is down below in the description. Like I said, Google Drive. Read that up and read it carefully. Really take your time on it and don't rush through it. There's so much in there that uh, it's pretty intricate and hard to understand sometimes. But I put it in layman's terms. I really try to make it easier to understand than it could be. So... Yeah, just let me know what you guys think. I really hope that this helps put a cap on what you're going through and to usher you down the right path and to really just lead you to a new chapter and usher you to that next level. And so that is always it for sure. And, you know, I just I, I ask God every day to bless you guys. And I hope that you are feeling that and are doing better. So, yep. There's so much more coming around here. Hit that subscribe button if you'd like. That would be wonderful. Again, let me know what you guys think of this. Hope you have a great night.